Hey, welcome back. Happy Tuesday and welcome to another episode of this. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about haunted house books. And I love talking last week about haunted house movies. You know, I didn't include the movie House, the one with William Cat in it. I think I may need to dedicate an entire video just on that movie because I have thoughts. There was a reason why ultimately it didn't make the list. Although it is a great haunted house movie, there's just more to it. And it's a movie that's really important <laughs> to, you know, my upbringing and all of that. So we may have to talk, have a deeper dive into that movie. So if you were going to be one of those people messaging me going, you forgot this, that's, <laughs> that's why there was a reason. Now let's talk books. I have a really long list here and I'm sorry if it feels overwhelming. Of course, everything will be listed in the description box down below as always, but I just, again, this is probably my favorite subgenre of horror because haunted house storytelling can go so many different ways. It can be very quiet. It can be very soft. It can be gothic. It can be graphic. It can be very extreme. It, it, it runs the whole gamut and it's, it's, it's just my favorite. It just is. I love a good haunted house tale. And part of that might be because some of the, the more fun ones, the ones that, you know, the Gothic ones, certainly, but the, even the ones that aren't necessarily Gothic, they always take place in these grand homes, you know, these beautiful old man mansions. Sometimes they're crumbling, sometimes they're not. They're still beautiful and it's just <sighs> a movie I did forget to talk about last week and I'm very annoyed about it was a movie called Rose Red and it was a movie written by Stephen King. Um, there is a book that came later called, um, I can't remember what it's called. I'll link it below if I can remember it. It's a really good haunted house movie. It's a little cliche. It's a little generic, but it's still good. It's still a good time. If you like haunted house stuff, look up Rose Red. It is a mini series. Uh, you have to watch it in two parts, but it's worth it. It's worth your time. I like to watch it around Halloween sometimes. My husband's not a huge fan of it, but I get alone TV time. I'm a big girl. I can do that. So let's get started on haunted house books. And I'm so excited because, ah! All right, first, of course, of course. And these are in no sort of chronological order. I went all over the place. <laughs> I know I like to do movies in chronological order because it kind of matters sometimes because of remakes and stuff. But on this, we're all over the place, so buckle up. First and foremost, it has to be The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Now, if you've never read this book, and I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to, but I worry sometimes people avoid certain works for the same reason I might because of the notoriety and you're worried you might be let down or maybe you're worried that it could be kind of a high-minded kind of horror that kind of lofty horror that I know some of us who are more fans of the pulpy side and that's me too there's no judgment there that you might avoid this book and I'm telling you I mean I know I run a podcast that talks about works of classical literature but this is an easy read and it is a wonderful, entertaining read. It is a very good book. There's a reason. This book absolutely deserves its notoriety. The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson absolutely deserves a notoriety. If you haven't read it, please read it. If you have read it, give it a reread. It stands up. Two, Hell House by Richard Matheson. Now I mentioned last week that these two works are very similar and they are. The premise is very similar. The whole, uh, the mythology, well, it's a little, it's a little more uh, graphic with Richard Matheson's work. Um, someone once compared these books by saying, uh, "The Haunting of Hill House is like the PG rated, and Hell House is more R rated or NC seventeen. It's it's the grown up version of the story, and." Even though they're the same, the writing is very different. I personally am an enormous fan of Richard Matheson, everything he wrote, even some of the stuff that tended to be a little more gushy, which isn't my thing, yet he was such a good writer, such a good writer, and just not enough people read and gush on Richard Matheson, and he totally deserves it. Hell House is a great book. Like, the Belasco House, love it. It's probably my favorite 
big haunted house. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, Lyndon Manor. Now, I want to, I, I really had to make sure I put this author in here. This is a ghost story. It is a very classical, old school, gothic ghost story. It was put out in 2017, so it's not old. Written by an author named Catherine Cavendish. Catherine Cavendish is a working author now. She has great output. I cannot recommend this author's work enough. Everything she has written has sucked me in completely. I'm completely into it. She even has a fantastic blog. <laughs> she, she lives over, now I'm not sure what part of the UK. Uh, I think it's England. But like she'll post pictures. Oh, I went for a walk today and walked by this church. It's been standing since the 1100s. And you know, as an American, you're like, excuse me, what? It's been standing for how long? And it's still working. It's still functional. People still go there to worship. It's amazing. And there's sort of a, she takes her craft very seriously. And she definitely has a massive respect for the old Gothic writers. But there is also sort of a effortless delivery to it where it, this is no big deal. This is just a story. And I love that. I She's very um, anybody can read her. Very approachable. Very for everybody. And, um, I definitely do tend to think of, you know, Horace Walpole and Clara Reeve when I read Catherine Cavendish. So, yes, Lyndon Manor, fantastic, kind of old school, haunted house, gothic book. It was a great read. Uh, The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Had to bring it up. Another gothic work, uh, ghost story, just kind of, there's going to be a few of these just because I, I love them. But if we're going to talk haunted dwellings, I mean, we have to talk about some of these gothic works. And I think I like the movie The Innocents a little better than the book The Turn of the Screw. But The Turn of the Screw is one of those books, you have to read it. And I haven't covered it yet on the podcast. I will. <laughs> it's coming up this year as I'm planning planning it out. Um, it's one of those books you should read. You should get a taste, not only for Henry James and his writing, and it's, it's not that old of a work. You I mean, you'll be able to read it just fine. Anybody will be able to sit down and read it. It's also, you know, what's important about some of these works is the pacing, the slow revelations that you get with some of these books. And uh, The Turn of the Screw is definitely one of those. Fantastic book. Next, the Shining by Stephen King. If I talked about the movie, we got to talk about the book. And I talked about the Stanley Kubrick movie uh, last week. And I want to talk about the book now. And I have to assure you, these are very different stories. If you only know The Shining through Kubrick, fix that, please. This book is devastating. It's heartbreaking. It's so good. And um, I think it was Mick Garris. They made a miniseries movie based more on the book and it's good it's very good the ending is a little oh god they always <laughs> Stephen King and McGarris always tended to really add on the sugary syrup at the end and I think that's for some people and I think it's not for some people I I find it annoying but no judgment if you love it but the book you have to read this book because to understand where Kubrick got it wrong where Jack Nicholson and some of his choices and how he played the character of Jack, where they got it wrong. It, it's a fantastic book. Please, please read it. All right. Burnt Offerings by Robert Marasco. I talked about the movie um, last week. And I'm putting this on here. Full disclosure, I have not read this book. But I want to make sure that we understand, you know, this, that movie is based on a book. And it was, a, at the time, a very popular book. I hadn't heard about it until I watched the movie. And I was looking it up for the Ghost Riders podcast and saw that it was based on this fairly popular book. This is a book that I will be getting to add to my collection. That's why I wrote it down. <laughs> Some of these are books that, to be read, you know, I want to get to it. Burnt Offerings by Robert Morasco is definitely one of them. If you've watched the movie with Oliver Reed and Karen Black, I think you'd understand why I really want to read the book. Um, the House on the Borderland by William Hope Hodgson. What can be said about this book except this is one of those, you ever hear the, <laughs> it's going to sound like I'm throwing shade, but I'm not. 
You ever hear the saying, dwarves standing on the shoulders of giants? The house on the borderland is a giant and many stand on its shoulders. Um, not necessarily dwarves, there are greats that stand there, but this is a foundational work. This is one of those books that if you want to have any sort of grasp on the the history of the horror genre, especially modern horror, because this isn't an old book, uh, th this is one of those books you have to read. If you're a horror fan, if you're a horror, horror creator, this, this, this is like required reading. And it is also uh, the emotional depth in this story is so good. Like I, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about it, except saying you really should be reading this. If you like horror at all, I don't care if you like haunted houses. I don't care like if you don't like the, the sort of gothic softer tones that haunted house stories can kind of take this one you need to read. I'm going to say that about all of these, but this one I really mean it. <laughs> Next, The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde. Come on. I have read this story, but I, um, oh God, someone's calling me. See the downsides of recording on my phone. If I had more watchers, I would get a camera, but we get the phone now. It's spam time. Everybody wants to call it this time of day. Uh, The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde. I read this story a long, long time ago, but when I was a kid, I used to watch this movie every Halloween. There was a time when, you know, before everybody had cable, where you would have to watch what, you know, ABC and CBS and NBC wanted to show you. And oftentimes it was the Canterville Ghost. I, uh, this was such a charming movie. I love this movie and I love the story. Everything with Oscar Wilde is very, you know, very melodramatic, but also, you can read it as tongue-in-cheek. You cannot read it as tongue-in-cheek and take it very seriously, and that works too, but knowing Oscar Wilde, knowing his wit and his personality, it helps to read some things thinking, tongue-in-cheek, thinking, you know, he's being a smart ass about certain things. This is a great story. Next, Beloved by Toni Morrison. This is a devastating story, and I'm only adding it because the horrors in this story have very little to do with the haunting for the most part. The haunting is more like a bad memory or personification of the horrors inflicted on slaves. Um, it's a fantastic book. It is a fantastic book and it is devastating but it is a wonderful read. If, uh, like, it, it's heavy. I'll, I'm, I'm 100% gonna warn you about that. It's very heavy. I listened to it in audiobook form. Um, Toni Morrison herself read it, narrated it, and I can't imagine anybody else could have done a better job. It was wonderful. And again, heavy, but wonderful. Totally worth the read. This is a haunting of a place that isn't the Grand Mansion. You know, it's much different, but very much, very much worth your time. Uh, the Fall of the House of Usher, Edgar Allan Poe. Another classic. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking back now to all the fucking movies I forgot last week, and The Canterville Ghost is one of them. The Fall of the House of Usher is another one with Vincent Price. Have you ever seen that one? Oh, it's so good. But the those, those short story is also great in the very Edgar Allan Poe way that all of his stuff is great in the very heavy, atmospheric, demented way that all of his stuff is great. If you haven't read it, fix that. <laughs> Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And again, I talked about the movie last week. We got to talk about the story. This story is, and again, this one is more about mm, one of those again, where it's like, is there a ghost or is it a crazy lady story? And this new wife living in the shadow of the first wife, who some say was great and some were like, no, she was a bad lady. And, you know, there are things that are going on that lead you to think, oh, maybe there is a haunting. And, you know, ultimately you find out in the end. But this is a great read. Daphne du Maurier was a fantastic writer. 
Um, the Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. Now, now hear me out. Hear me out. Just hear me out. If you can divorce the story from the media circus, from the movie, because that movie sucked. And I, I know I included it last week, and I have a soft place in my heart for it, but ultimately the movie does suck. This is a very good book if you can just take it as a work of fiction. It's cheesy, it's fast paced. They throw everything at you in this book. Everything but the kitchen sink. And it's fun and it, it's creepy. Like it's a legitimately creepy book. If you start believing in the Warrens bullshit and the, um, the people who live there, if you take it as anything but fiction, you're going to be rolling your eyes a lot. But if you can just, just relax and take it as a work of fiction, this is a great book. And I mean that this is honestly of, oh, I don't know. I think this might be in my top five though. As much as I love all of these, the Amityville Horror, this book gave me nightmares. This book gave my mom nightmares. My mom is a lifetime horror fan. Like it, there's something about it that is really creepy. And if you just take it as a work of fiction, it's effective. Okay. Now, since we're talking about Jay Anson, I also want to talk about the work that came next. Um, it's called 666. <laughs> it's literally the three sixes. Um, it's not spelled out by Jay Anson. This, <laughs> this is a fun book. I think it was written in all seriousness and not, not to, to insult Jay Anson. He's a fantastic writer. Again, I love the Amityville Horror. And I really like 666 too. But if they made a... Oh God, if they made a movie about it, and I don't know about it, I'm going to be upset. But if they made a movie about it, it would be hilarious. Because it's like the Satan house where there are different pieces from evil places put into this house. And it's like that you can meet Satan in this house by touching certain artifacts. It's, it's weird, but it's a good book. It, it, it's one of those, it's worth your time. And it's a short read. These aren't long books. So <laughs> these will be listed down below, but I mean, give 666 a try too, if you like the Amityville Horror. Um, next, Horror House by J.N. Williamson. Now this is kind of like since Grady Hendrix wrote Paperbacks from Hell and Paperbacks, old Paperbacks have been making a comeback. I've seen a lot of people talk about this book and it gets very, it gets admittedly very mixed reviews. But I think this is a fun book if you can just take it as fun. I mean, this is a book, like, there's a Thomas Edison ghost machine in this book. Now, we get a little muddy with location because it should be in Pittsburgh where the ghosts happen, but they happen in Indiana, I think, or is it Indianapolis? I can't remember. I'm sorry. But Thomas Edison Ghost Machine, big epic house, fun book. That's my, that's, that's my verdict. Totally worth your time. Um, now I think I've talked about this book before. And I don't care. I'm going to talk about it again because this is a book that is very important to my personal mythology as a person, as a creator, and as a fan. And that's The Haunting by Ruby Jean Jensen. Excuse me. I cannot recommend this book enough. It It is a haunted house book, but it is also, there's other stuff kind of going on that makes this house creepy. Uh, the, the squishy doll it always reminds me, but the things in the basement and the ghost of the, the witchy woman, it, it's a really good book. Um, it's not a super short one, but it is, it is, it's just good. It's just good. It's important to me. And I understand if you read it and are like, I don't understand what the big deal is. Don't tell me though, <laughs> but it's a really good book. What's next? The Haunting. Oh, The House by Bentley Little. And this is another kind of monster house, uh, time slip, location slip kind of thing. The house is holding people hostage, but it brings them in in different locations. It's a little confusing, but he brings it around because Bentley Little can do that. Very good book. Um, Ghost House by Claire McNally. I'm going to show you my poor beat up little copy. It doesn't even have a front cover anymore. Uh, this is a good book. This is a book that I read as a kid. Um, probably shouldn't have because there's some adult stuff going on. 
sex. <laughs> but um, this is a good book. Uh, you know, sometimes with these female horror writers, you're surprised when they go full on with attacking children. And this is one, like, I talk about that a lot with Ruby Jean Jensen. Ruby Jean Jensen kills the shit out of kids in her works. Uh, Claire McNally, there is a scene in this book where a tiny, tiny little girl, just out of her toddling years, gets boiling hot water dumped on her. And it's horrifying. And that's the point. We're reading a horror book. But the, this is one of those where you get information. You know, there's there's information that has to be discovered to understand the haunting. And it, it works out. And it's a good story. It's very worth your time. It's just a little book. It's nothing that's too big. You could have it done in a weekend. Uh, oh, The Ghost in the Swing by Janet Patton Smith. These are, a lot of these are old books. Um, that's not the one. A lot of these are old books. Where the hell is it? Did I not have it? I thought I did. Oh well. Um, this is a this is more of a children's book. Uh, it, it's a children's. Oh, there it is. The Ghost in the Swing. <laughs> you see, it's a little one. This is a book. Uh, kids can read this. This is kid safe because the protagonist is a child. The ghost is a child, and it's kind of got that whole ghost mystery thing going on with it. Um, it's got the big house in the country. The girl is visiting for a while. It's a really solid book, and, you know, you read it as a kid, and you grow up, and you read it again as, a, as an adult, and it holds up. It's a really solid story. Uh, Night Stalks the Mansion by Constance Westby and Harold Cameron. Now this, this one some of my paperbacks are just old ass messes I'm sorry but you know if I got them from my grandma I, I can't get rid of them because they remind me of her this book is weird it is a haunted mansion book and it is non-fiction I feel like I should say that now the Amityville Horror claims to be non-fiction adventure of a family surviving this house and this is the same thing the uh what is it the, it says up to here, I'm going to read this to you. First, the Amityville Horror, and now the true story of the Cameron family's terrifying encounter with the supernatural. And it is a, it, it's a, it's a, it's a ghost mystery book. It's, this is one where, you know, there's detective work going on and you're finding information. And you know, I love that. I talked about that last week, how I love the stuff. This one takes itself a little more seriously than the Amityville Horror, which is why I'm okay saying this one is nonfiction because ultimately these people are believers, but ultimately, even if you're not yourself a believer in the supernatural, this book is digestible. It's a really good read. Um, takes place in Philadelphia, which is just, you know, doesn't take me long to get there from where I am, but and it's a, it's a huge, grand old house. It has a crypt on the property. Or is it a cemetery? I think it's a crypt. It, there's a crypt on the property. And there's just a lot of discovery. There's a lot of information. It's a very smart book, considering the material that they're working with. So I, th I think this is one that's worth your time. And these are all old books. I don't even know if you can find them anymore. Um, remember, thriftbooks.com. That's where I get a lot of these. I mean, of course, these I've had forever. These have traveled to the West Coast and back with me. Um, but this is a good book. Again, nonfiction. And some people may want to do the quotation marks around it. But it it really is. It's a good book. What do we have next? Night Sucks the Mansion. Oh, Thorn Manor and Other Bizarre Tales by Diane Wing. This it's it's got seven short stories in it and i found this book at my local uh what do you call it witchy shop i was there buying various roots and herbs for stuff that's none of your business <laughs> but I, they also have a small book section by it's a lot of local authors who self-publish or work with a very small it looks like vanity presses but that doesn't matter because thorn manor the title story is actually a really great, really solid haunted house story. Um, just kind of like it, it was enough that it kind of knocked my socks off. So I'm recommending it to you. You can get this book on Amazon. 
Um, I checked. <laughs> it's a totally, totally solid story. I was completely entertained and I loved it. Um, bonus, I want to talk about uh, Stories of an Antiquary by M.R. James. M.R. James wrote mostly ghost stories, wrote all ghost stories, uh, with a very gothic bent to them. M.R. James is very important to the horror genre because um, H.P. Lovecraft and Clark Ashton Smith were obsessed with his works. They were, he was very influential to them. And you can buy, you know, a big, big book full of his uh, collected shorts stories because he didn't write book books, he wrote shorts. And I mean, the collection is huge. So if you want to get ghost stories from an antiquary, it's a thin book and it's got some of his maybe more well-known uh, ghost stories in here and they're magnificent. I think of all the stories of his that I've read and I've got some catching up to do. I'm not, you know, an M.R. James <laughs> expert. I, I know he was, you know, an important guy at Cambridge. He was a provost there for a while. Um, but of what I've read, the ash tree is probably my favorite, but it's a tight race because his stuff is so damn good. If you've never read M.R. James, again, this is like, like, uh, William Hope Hodgson. If you haven't read M.R. James, you need to catch up with that. It is a very literary kind of storytelling, but not in an uptight way. There's still very good horror stories. There's still very good ghost stories. And even me, where you're like, where are we going with this? I can't guess what's coming up next. Um, and then last, maybe least, but I don't think so. Your old pal Summer wrote a haunted house, haunted barn story called A Fresh Start. And you can buy it on Amazon. If you're super ambitious, you can come find me at a convention that I'm at and get a copy. You can message me and I'll send you a signed copy. But A Fresh Start, this is a, it's a novella. All my work is short, but I, you know, being such a big fan, I had to write one. I'm not done. I'm going to write more haunted stuff, but I had to get one out. And this story, personally, uh, I was going through a very bad period in my life, a very dark period, and I was not feeling settled in my life. And this book, writing it and getting some of the stuff out, helped me to feel a little more comfortable with some of the decisions I made. That's all I'll say, but I, so yeah, I have one. I don't do this all the time. I don't, I, what, this is the second time I've talked about a book I've written, maybe the third. So give me a break. <laughs> if you'd like to read it, check it out. But seriously, big list here. Check them out. They'll all be listed below. So that's it for this week. Um, I'm not sure what will be next week. I might have a surprise for you. Um, there will be a couple different videos coming up in the next couple months. Um, I thought I'd do a video on showing you how to set up a convention table or a vendor table when you're out selling your books. That'll be of interest to some people who are, you know, aspiring to go out there and sell their works. I thought I would do a video showing that and I have a couple guests that I'm going to be having on very soon. The lighting is getting fucked up. There's like black clouds outside we're about to get dumped on. So that'll do it for me. I hope everybody's doing fine. I hope the world is treating you good. Where the hell is the remote? I found it. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you next week with something, something, but I'll, I'll be there for sure. So take care and I'll see you there.